China's total gold production and net imports were about 1,775 tons last year, resulting in a gap of over 1,300 tons. The gap represents the amount of gold that has, quote, gone missing from the figures. Welcome to the Morning Markets and Metals with Vince Lancey, where each day he brings you the precious metals and financial news to get you ready for your day. And now, here's Vince. Good morning. I'm Vince Lancey. On today's Market Rundown, we're going to look at China's missing gold. We're going to look for China's missing gold, I should say. Uh, and we're also going to touch on the gold market behavior yesterday and today. What to make of it. You'll see it's down 13 and change there. Okay, start with the markets. The dollar is up 34, 105.96. 10 yields of 428, up three. SP 500 is offered on change at 54.69. The VIX is 13.02. Gold is down 13 and change at 23.05 after a down day yesterday. Silver is 28.82, down five cents. Copper is 43.436 and three quarters, down a little bit less than a penny. Oil is up 60 at 81.69. Natural gas is 270, down three cents. Crypto is down. Bitcoin 61 spot 300. Ethereum 3377 down 414 down 17, respectively. Platinum Palladium are both up. Palladium is up eight at 944, and platinum is up 1213 at 994. Okay, so this isn't purely economic. Grains are all up with soybean up 13, 14. That's a little over a percentage point. Corn is up three cents and wheat is up five and a half, six cents. So corn is the laggard in percentage terms. There's the gold chart. Uh, yesterday I said if we get below that low, I would short it for the rest of the day. And that worked out. It also followed through. We're not in danger yet. Okay, uh, let's get to the stories. Let's get to the topics at hand. China's gold reserve numbers don't add up. We'll get into that in a second. First, on the homepage, yesterday we put out a story uh, after the video called a Special Why Flor by Friday is very big for gold and silver, and that entails uh, the fact that we have end of the week, end of the month, end of the quarter, and end of the first half of the year. For premium subscribers. We also repinned a story. We will buy our own bonds now. That was done in February. Uh, it gets into the mechanics of what happens when no people no longer buy our bonds, when foreigners no longer buy it. We have to buy them, but there's more to it than that. Uh, we still need their money. We don't want them to take their money out. So those who have bonds with us a year from now, we'll be putting them into stocks if they wish to remain in the United States. And so we're doing a convertible deal. Gold, the Everything Hedge Report, I mentioned that before. It's a, just a really good analysis. Uh, Kenya protesters storm parliament. Police fire live rounds after lawmakers unleash eco-austerity. Uh, that's a current event right now. It feels like an economic hitman thing. China's gold reserve numbers don't add up. That's the uh, original story that we sound and, uh, found and rehosted. Uh, we're going to get into that right now. So let's go. Well, we can look at that later on. Let's let's talk about China's gold, China's gold reserves. China's overall gold demand is consistently strong. China imported over 1,400 tons of gold in 2023, making it the largest gold importer in the world. China is also the world's largest gold producer, producing 375 tons last year. While the PBOC has added gold reserves, China's commercial banks have cut their holdings in the past two years from 2064 tons to 785 tons, with Bank of China cutting the most by 533 tons. Bank of China. We'll come back to them. China's total gold production and net imports were about 1,775 tons last year, resulting in a gap of over 1,300 tons. The gap represents the amount of gold that has, quote, gone missing from the figures. Okay, so that those are my bullets. That's my summary for you. Here's uh, the story, which in and itself is a summary, but I, I want to give you the facts. The analysis the analysis is already there. I'm just not going to talk about it today. Uh, I want to make it so people can understand what's going on in my head here. A new report estimated that 2,700 metric tons of gold are, quote, missing, even as China's central bank boosts its reserves of the monetary metal. Could it be that 2,700 metric tons of gold, more than half of the world's annual global production, is being hidden in communist China? 
Ooh, yes, it could be. Uh, the question arises in a new report from Singapore-based newspaper and adds to mounting speculation that China has amassed a larger than reported stockpile of the metal that is the basis of monetary value. The four-figure gap was discovered by economist Chen Long. I will tip my hat to this kid, this guy, this adult, this man, because he's right. Uh, and we should probably talk. After he compared the total gold holdings in China, incorporated reported holdings of retail buyers, regional banks, and the People's Bank of China with the country's import and production numbers. China, we believe, is not trying to... This is us talking again. China, we believe, is not trying to corner the gold market with these actions, uh, assuming that they are hiding it. Uh, Although that will be the net result as more leveraged players scramble for physical to secure paper positions they cannot finance. All right, so I'm jumping ahead here a little bit. China has more gold than they're saying. That's all you need to know for now. China is protecting itself from collateral shortage in case of financial crisis. China learned a very, very important lesson back when oil went negative in 2020 and has no intentions of ever letting it happen again. All right. Yeah, this is a lot to get into right now. So I'll just say this. In 2020, when oil went negative, who was the biggest loser? Not U.S. Uh, refiners, not U.S. producers, China. China got smoked on that because they have a lot. They had a lot of uh, financial assets uh, tied to oil. And well, the Bank of China took a major hit on that, uh, and other banks did as well. And since then, China has been reducing financialization of assets, which is also consistent with them separating from the U.S. and the West in general. Less financialization of assets means you need to protect your collateral more. No leveraging of collateral. You will not do 10, 20, and 30 futures against one contract, and that's what they're doing. Uh we will connect the dots for premium subscribers on this Friday as it goes back to 2020, as I just said, when oil went negative. In what we are pretty sure will be a news story down the road. We're telling you what's going to be news maybe a year from now. So this is all tied to China's accumulation and securing of gold for the BRICS, okay, for uh, backing their currency for international trade. It's all tied to it. All right. So again, just the facts for now, all right, and a couple questions for you to think about until we meet again. China has misplaced a significant amount of its PBOC gold. Misplaced is a word I use. Production plus imports nets out to 1,300 ton tons purchased or added, but not accounted for. The question is, where is it? Was it put in a secret stash or was it clandestinely sold? That could have happened too, you know. They don't necessarily have the gold. They could have sold it. It's commercial. China's commercial banks are reducing their holdings, presumably giving the gold up to the PBOC. China's commercial banks are reducing their gold supply while the official party reserves are increasing from purchases. So we'll go back to this chart here, right? PBOC is going up more than... I'm sorry, PBOC is increasing gold holdings and as a percentage of official reserves, the value is also going up. Okay, that's that's what they're saying there. We'll bring it back to this. The availability of gold for financially based asset investment has decreased driving demand into physical. So these points are all points that we're making here, but you can rest assured that they're correct. What is going on? We'll talk about that on Friday. But I will say this, there is, a, there is an intersection between China's Preparation for the BRICS launch, China's internationalization of the renminbi, and the uh, missing gold, which goes all the way back to a fear that China has of Western manipulation of financial assets to take physical collateral from the East. That's it. Uh, moving on. There is a new space race this time between the U.S. and China. On Tuesday, China took an important step forward. A Chinese spacecraft touched down on grasslands in China's inner Mongolia region, carrying the first ever rock samples from the far side of the moon. Okay. Which reminds me of the space race. We're already in first place. Don't worry about it. 
Now, if you're an American, I'll, I'll tell you why. We have risks. Don't get me wrong. When William Shatner, this is going to be crazy, but it makes sense. When William Shatner uh, took that rocket ride, I think it was with uh, Amazon. When he came back, he had a conversation with Elon Musk on X, which was Twitter at the time. And he said, it's become clear to him from conversations with executives as well as government officials that he didn't say it in these words, that the U.S. will colonize space between the moon and earth. That will be where business will be responsible uh, for it. So space tourism, whatever we're going to be doing out there, stuff that I haven't even thought of yet. And that outside the moon, it'll be NASA's territory. So NASA is going to give up uh, worrying about the space between here and the moon. And Musk said, yes, yes, indeed. If you understand how America colonizes, and if you understand that we need to develop colonies to create demand for products to spur capitalism on, you understand that big business is moving into space, whether it be uh, tourism, whether it be space garbage hauling, whether it be, um, I don't know, like things we haven't thought of yet, you know, uh, uh, space walks, you know, it's going to be like an amusement park. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but look at the people who have made inroads there. So Amazon, okay, uh, Musk, Tesla, whatever you want to call it, SpaceX, whatever the whole thing is. Uh, even uh, Virgin, even though it's been a little bit of a a sham, at least he understands that that's your next colonization area. So, you know, Elon Musk is talking about the, about Mars. Forget about Mars. We're not even going to get there yet. The money is going to be in between here. Now, here's why that's important for the space race between U.S. and China. The U.S. doesn't send military into some place to invade it. The U.S. colonizes with capitalism. Businesses go in. And where businesses go in, military follows to protect our interests. Now, that's not something that we do exclusively. Communist countries have been doing it forever. Communist countries will uh, uh, get a lease on a port. Let's say I'm going to lease a port in Venezuela and I'm China. Well, we need to put our assets there to protect it. We need to put in some guns and some gunships. Russia does this all the time. So the space race is real. It's not technological, though that'll be a big part of it. Uh, it's about who can establish a foothold in space for a legitimate secular reason, which will then give them an excuse to militarize it. That's where we're going, folks. Uh, data on deck today, new home sales. Thursday, pending home sales, and Friday, PCE. Uh, premium, we have a report from Goldman Sachs on Tesla. Very good report, updating it. Uh, and... Uh, that's it. Other than for me to say, when we were here, I said, if we go below here, I'm going to short it. Wait, we're here. Sorry. We're going below here. I'm going to short it. Well, I shorted it. I shorted it by selling the call spread. But if you remember, I told you I wanted to put a condor on, right? So I sold the call spread. And if the market stops going down, I'm going to sell a put spread. So how I know if the market's going to stop going down, well, let's zoom out to the daily. I'll give you, I'll give you a comment on why I'm not worried. Remember, we're in a range, okay? We're in a range of a range. I'll make it the four hours so you can see a little bit better, right? Uh, two hours best. So we're in a range. Well, sorry about all that. Well, here's the range. Here's the range of the range. We broke that. So I would not be surprised uh, if we went down to as low as 2289, although I think it should stop at least once between 20. 296 and 2300 but we're not that far away now this is where that big buyer was before so we're out of the range of the range which was here and now we're back in the wider range again so if there's no buying here we have a washout and that's why friday is very important if we're near here for friday let's see what happens if we're near here for friday let's see what happens but if we're in the middle no interest uh, Vince, have a great day Tune in tomorrow. We'll talk about this uh, China thing a little bit more. No one else is talking about it yet. Well, thanks for tuning in to today's Markets and Metals with Vince Lancey. The show is brought to you each day by Miles Franklin Precious Metals, who we encourage you to consider for your next gold or silver purchase or sale. 
Miles Franklin has pricing that's among the best in the industry on most products, and Arcadia is proud to be a licensed Miles Franklin representative and happy to help whenever you have questions or want to place an order. Where this week's silver special is Vitel Preziosi Silver Kilo Bars for only $1.79 over spot. And certainly with premium still on the low side, while the price is pulled back, if you're looking to add to your silver stack, the Etel Preziosi Kilo Bars are a great way to do so. And you can find out more by calling us at 833-326-4653 or emailing Arcadia at milesfranklin.com. And as always, thanks for watching. Please note that this video is not intended as legal licensed financial trading advice and is to be used for informational purposes only. Please contact your financial advisor before making any decisions. And thanks for watching.